How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We need to take a look at Google here today because there's some massive news that came out during their earnings that YouTube is as big as Netflix. They have a fantastic moat that we need to talk about. They're growing much faster than Netflix. And this is just part of Google's model. So we're going to take a look at it. Let's well, let's get into that. But first of all, if you guys don't mind hitting the like button, I appreciate that. Hit subscribe too. And if you want to check out tip ranks, I'll put a link underneath the video along with links to other things that can make you money. So thank you guys for doing that. Let's take a look. So they reported earnings per share that was a beat by about 40 to 45 percent. They crushed earnings. Now, this is not the same growth that they had seen in the quarters before. But still, still significant growth coming from Google. And the fact is they had a great quarter last quarter. So just keeping that up is fantastic. Analysts moved up their price, uh, their estimates for next quarter because they had such a strong earnings this quarter. Hopefully they can continue to beat. Now we'll take a look at some of their four projections. But what I really want to talk about is this. YouTube is as big as Netflix and growing much faster. So Google released some information about YouTube's actual ad revenue. They had $7 billion in ad revenue, and this is significantly higher than it was in 2020. So they had in three months, uh, in three months, just this last quarter, they had 7 billion in revenue compared to 7.3 billion for Netflix. However, they had this uh, about the same amount in 2020. So they had 7.85 7.85 billion in all of 2020, and now they're matching that in one quarter. So a huge growth sector of their company. Now that's not everything that YouTube actually generates. That's just ads, subscription fees, and the type of revenue Netflix generates are actually in a separate category for Google. Now they didn't explain how much that was, but they said. They said the company's filing uh, noted that the entire category of revenue grew about 1.5 billion to 6.6 billion, and they credited YouTube subscriptions for the growth ahead of other factors. So they did grow significantly. I mean, we don't know exactly how much that looks like, but the fact is the subscription category is 6.6 billion. So you would think, okay, they probably had some subscriptions before. And then the majority of this 1.5 billion is now from YouTube. So I think we can conservatively say anywhere from 500 million to a billion dollars this last quarter, just a billion of this 6.6 billion is probably from YouTube. So that puts them above Netflix. Now that is kind of, that's kind of crazy when you think about it, right? The interesting thing about YouTube, and I think a lot of us realize it, but don't really think about it too often, is the fact that YouTube is unparalleled, right? I mean, if you're watching this, you probably don't use a lot of other streaming services or a lot of other services that are similar to YouTube. The closest one I can think of is Twitch, and that's often thought of for gaming and live streaming. It's not really the same thing as YouTube. Now, it does provide a lot of the same content, but it's much smaller and not as well known. So YouTube really stands alone compared to Netflix, which there's Amazon Prime, there's Hulu, there's Disney Plus, there are a bunch of other smaller streaming platforms. They're all trying to do what Netflix has done. Now I will say, it's probably gonna be harder for YouTube to grow as much as something like Netflix. And I guess there are two schools of thought on this. First of all, you could say, Okay, first, uh, first of all, Netflix only has about 200 million or so paid subscribers. If they get up to a billion, that's still only one seventh of the world's population, and that's a 5x from here. YouTube already has a lot of people that watch it. It's going to be harder possibly to spread that, but also there isn't the cost barrier. There's not the pay to play part of it, right? Where you can just start watching YouTube right off the bat as long as you have an internet connection and it doesn't, it's not illegal in your country, you can start watching it, which is interesting. The other thing is there have been research articles or just research in general that says if you use YouTube, you will get a better return on your investment for advertisers than just using something like TV. So that is going to be really interesting to see if more advertisers want to move over their money over time. They say here, 
the advertisers that shift 20% of TV spend to YouTube could see a 25% increase in total campaign reach with a lower cost per reach of 20%. So again, a lot of advertisers might start moving over to YouTube instead of putting it in TV or in newspapers or in Facebook ads or whatever else, right? There, I think it's a lot more engaging than a lot of other forms of advertising. Now, looking at Google overall, we're sitting around $2,720 on G-O-O-G-L. Now, there are two different tickers, but this ticker for Google is 2720. This puts them at about $1.83 trillion market cap, not billion, but trillion. Now, compare this to Netflix. Netflix is very small comparatively. I mean, it's about one-eighth or one-ninth the size. So, we're talking about YouTube, which is still, uh, it's growing faster and brings in more money, but also it is just one part of Google's business. But that being said, I would I would guess it is a, a lot cheaper to run than Netflix. Fact is, they don't have to make a lot of content. I mean, they do make some content, but people that have, or people that use YouTube often aren't using it to get content created from YouTube. Now they do have some content like that to hopefully bring in more subscriptions, but that's not why I think the majority of people get YouTube anyways, the the paid version, because they just don't want ads. They want to be able to play it when their phone's off. That's why I have it. So overall, that is, I think, a really interesting metric that you have to look at if you are invested in Netflix or invest in Google or really any streaming service. Now, let's look at some forward projections. I was just looking at Facebook and Google over on tip ranks. So we will just look at Google here. But if we take their earnings per share and make that run rate, so we multiply the last quarter by four, that puts them at 111, essentially, earnings per share over the next year. That means that at the price per share that is now, we have a forward PE ratio of about 24.6, assuming no growth from this last quarter. Now, I realize that that is higher than a lot of other blue chip plays, but their year over year growth for just this last quarter is 62%. So they have been growing revenues quite quickly and their earnings per share was actually something like 160% year over year for the quarter. Now, assuming just a 30% growth rate in their earnings per share, which I think that would be a little bit low because if their revenue is growing at 20 or 30 percent a year their earnings per share should grow even faster than that because a lot of it hits their bottom line right they have certain expenses that are just fixed expenses but let's assume they go up 30 percent a year the earnings per share for five years that puts them at 411 dollars worth of earnings so at a four, at a five-year forward pe ratio they're at about 6.6 you look five years out assume this growth it's at 6.6 they also have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. So after paying off all expenses, they have about $38 billion in cash. You might be saying, well, that's great, but maybe they should have a little bit more than a one point, you know, $1.8 trillion company. But at this size, I, I don't think they would want much more cash. I mean, what are you going to do with $200 billion in cash? Probably not. It's probably not a lot. It's probably better to reinvest in the company and to buy out other smaller companies and keep on growing that way instead of just sitting on cash at this point, especially in this low interest rate environment. So that is where we are sitting right now with Google. I own Google. I plan on buying more. I really like it. Now, it might not be the arbitrage opportunity that we see in some other stocks where you can get a 3x return maybe in the next year or two because people just aren't valuing it the right way. But Google is going to be one that I think continues to grow. It's going to be one that I could easily see at $5,000 in the next few years. And I think if it continues to grow, just at a steady 20 to 30%, people will continue to add it to their portfolio. But let me know what you guys think about this down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want, you can check out the link down below to Webull. Sometimes they give you sweet free shares like Facebook. Uh, I, I got a free share of Facebook a couple months ago, so definitely check that out. All you have to do is deposit $5 on their platform, I believe, um, and then you can get some free stocks. But don't quote me on that. It might be 100 Just throw in 100 
100 is safer to get those free stocks and even after that you can take it out if you want there's also a link down there to block fight again interest rate on your crypto thank you guys and i will see you in the next video bye